All right, now we're going to talk about the two uh, primary kinds of uh, magnets and how they are related by the fact that magnetism is created by a moving charge. Okay, so we know that we uh, magnetic field is created by a charge in motion. So how does that happen? How do we see that happen in practice? Well, uh, there are two really key ways to do this. The most obvious one is, well, if I have to have a charge in motion, well, I'm going to create a current, okay, which is just a bunch of charges in motion. Uh, and that does create a magnetic field, and that's called an electromagnet. Um, a stronger current through a wire creates a stronger field, uh, and the field closer to the wire is stronger than it is far away. Um, and so that matches with what we would expect, right? If I throw more charges through the, the, uh, the wire, it's going to create a bigger field, uh, and it's going to affect things close to it more than things far away. Uh, and we can define this by Ampere's law. That just says what, I, the, what we just said. Here's the current I. Make that big, and B, our magnetic field gets bigger. Uh, as R grows, as we get farther away from our wire, um, then uh, B gets smaller. Uh, that mu naught there, <laughs> don't worry about this title, is the permeability of free space. We'll also talk about the permittivity of free space. Don't worry about that. Just know that that's a constant. Uh, and that, that you can associate a value with it. Okay, we do need to understand the direction of the current, and so we have to learn this thing called the right-hand rule. And I'm not going to do a lot about this on a lecture because we really <laughs> need to be in person uh, to get some practice with this. But if we think about the current here going up, you always have to use your right hand, uh, stick your thumb, just like our little cartoon friend there, stick your thumb in the direction of the current, and the magnetic field actually goes uh, around the wire in a circular fashion, around the axis that is the wire, and that gives you the direction of that magnetic field. This is called the right grip rule, or the right hand rule two. But we'll do some practice with this uh, in class. The second way that a moving charge creates a useful magnet uh, is called a ferromagnet. And this is what you're used to calling a magnet, right? The thing you stick on your refrigerator or that the, the red and white toy. Uh, a ferromagnet is just a piece of iron, right? So you're thinking, what the heck? Where is my moving charge? Uh, we know <laughs> with an electromagnetic, yeah, there's the current. That's a bunch of moving charge. Where's the moving charge here? Uh, and the moving charge here is on the level, uh, on the atomic level. So the smallest magnetic dipole, that is the smallest magnet, uh, is an electron in an atom. Electrons actually have uh, our dipoles themselves, uh, and they're spinning around the nucleus, uh, and they are spinning around their own axis. And so they are charges that are moving. They're going to create a magnetic field. Now. Uh, that means that every electron is a magnet. So why isn't everything magnetized? The reason not everything is magnetized is because the direction of the movement of those electrons in any given material is going to be in all sorts of crazy directions, right? They're going to be uh, moving up and down and across and, you know, whatever, uh, east and west. <laughs> uh, and the result is they all cancel out each other. Um, and in fact, even on the atomic level, uh, electrons oftentimes move in pairs uh, and they're spinning in opposite directions uh, and so they're going to cancel out each other. So most materials don't have a significant magnetic field. Uh, there are some materials uh, that don't have uh, or that have some unpaired electrons like iron. Um, and these are the things that can be uh, magnetized. Now, not all iron is magnetic, and why is that? Well, uh, even if with unpaired electrons, if all of those atoms are randomly oriented, uh, like in this picture here, right? We have a north going this way, and a north going that way, a north down, a north up. Uh, they're all going to cancel out each other or not make a big difference. Um, 
But if we place another magnet that is uh, uh, next to our piece of iron, what can happen is that some of those atoms, enough of those atoms, will actually turn in the direction towards the magnetic field that the piece of material uh, will become magnetized and then uh, be attracted to the magnet. So that's why a magnet can um, stay attached to a piece of unmagnetized iron, like your refrigerator door. Not that your refrigerator door is made of iron, but you know you get the idea. Now the cool thing is, is let's say we take a really powerful magnet, we stick it next to our piece of iron, um, and then we heat up the unmagnetized piece of iron and let it cool all the while that it's sitting next to a powerful magnet. Well, you reorient the the powerful magnet reorients all these uh, electron dipoles. Uh, you heat it and then you cool it and they stay oriented like that. And so you've just created a magnet, which is pretty cool. Now, we have these two different kinds, ferromagnets and electromagnets. They act identically uh, in terms of creating the magnetic field. You can see here, here we have an electromagnet and a ferromagnet. The field that's displayed by this, uh, these iron filings is the same thing. Um, and those field lines look, as we talked about uh, before, like those electric field lines. They always originate from the uh, north side of the of the magnet so the field line is going in this direction up and around and they end at the south and the they point in the direction that a north magnetic pole will be pulled so that's a little trickier because it's not actually gonna like if i put another magnet here it's not going to start moving right because the south is attracted to the north but the north is attracted to the south but it will turn and it will turn so that the south pole is pulled to the north and the north pole is pushed to the south end. And so these are acting like each of these iron filings acts essentially like a little magnet or a compass. If we put a compass there, it would do the same thing. This here is showing our magnetic field if we had a current and we'll talk about the direction of this current before, but it, or later rather, uh, but we can see that the, um, the magnetic field is moving in a nice constant direction. You can draw those loops all the way around uh, to show the magnetic field around that uh, loop of current.